Class on Recital Project is an organization devoted to classical song, and we are devoted to it through performance, through mentoring activities, and through recording. This particular repertoire traces all of our history, and it is intimately tied with visual art, with dance, with theater, with really any other art form, as well as societal changes in our culture, other cultures, political changes in our culture and other cultures. But it's an art form that's not easy always for an audience. It takes some work. It takes interest in poetry and a devotion to words. We're recording the complete songs of Virgil Thompson. Anything that he wrote originally for voice and piano is what is going on this probably three disc set. It's a large scale project. Some of the songs have been recorded before, some have not. And it will be put out in February. We have a release date sometime in mid-February. It's gonna be released on New World Records. Listening to art song, uh, performing art song, connecting to art song in any way, takes a certain kind of time and concentration and an open mind, an open sort of spirit. You have to be present in the moment to really understand it. It's probably like reading a poem in general. You know, you kind of, some of these things are just real distillations of moments, but they contain worlds of human experience. In Thompson's music, more so than many composers, I find a cacophony of experience. You hear his upbringing. You absolutely hear his being brought up as a Baptist. You hear church music. You hear Americana band uh, music. You hear marching rhythm. And then you hear French minimalism. And you hear homages to to Eric Satie and Onager and to Mio and other composers that he really, really was close with in Paris. And then in his later works, you begin to hear what was rapidly becoming a New York-based but American music sound. The repertoire of Thompson's vocal music has a special place because he manages to be both an experimentalist and a traditionalist. Uh, experimental in the early works especially, where you'll hear why he was so close to John Cage, who actually wrote the first study of Virgil's music as a book. Cage and, and Thompson were friends why he was similar to Henry Cowell and other experimentalists of the 20s and 30s. Uh, at the same time, he was somebody who accompanied Mary Garden, the opera singer. And in that sense, like Samuel Barber, he had a visceral, immediate sense of what singers were like. And he decided that the thing that he wanted to do was to solve once and for all the problem of setting English, the English language to music, and particularly the American language, to deal with the problems that had not yet been solved, which were all of them. <laughs> and so he, that's how, how he put it. His exercises in that, from Gertrude Stein to w William Blake to one of my favorites, Kenneth Koch, there are a couple of Koch settings on this recording, this is a repertoire that is not nearly well enough known and is the classiest, best written stuff for voice that really uh, America has ever produced.
I think what's most special about this is coming back to why Thompson is such a special and a unique composer in the American century. Song can be complicated, poetry can be complicated, and Thompson has such a wonderful way of just giving you this poem and giving you the, I, the understanding and the experience of just somebody singing something special to you. And I think there is that focus and this intimacy and that very personal interaction you can have with Thompson that is um, going to be well represented in this project. And again, if you don't like how he sets Blake, go to the Gertrude Stein settings. If you think those are too quirky, you can come back to his hymn tunes. You know, the whole realm of human experience is explored and I think that speaks to his long standing, his longevity as a composer and his sort of wisdom about what music could contain. Tell me 